Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome to Smirk. Each week, one of our hosts introduces an original story, which we then use as a springboard for spirited discussion, whatever the moral or theme of their story is. Amanda, it's your turn this week. It is my turn this week. You said you were really pumped for this, like you have it in your head. You knew what you wanted. You were ready to go. This story has been rolling for like a week or so. So it's probably fiction. I don't know. Is it? Hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. she's talking about the recent death of President George H.W. Bush. No. Nope. Oh, is that what it was? Nope. That's not it. Is that it? Good guess, though. I guess. She's saying she does not care about presidents. That's, That's what she's saying. <laughs> can, can I, can I uh, side note, sidebar, I watched that funeral. Uh, good Did man, you? Good uh-huh. man. I, I watched part of it. And there was a moment where you see the three, you see um, oh, Clinton. Oh, yeah. Clinton. And Obama and Trump all together. <laughs> that is the most uncomfortable group grouping of people I have seen in a there very long time. There are some really funny memes yeah. using the screen cap and, of that, and they though. Should. Yeah, they should. If you, there's one picture where I saw it. Well, it just looked like the Omen, if you saw the Omen. Yeah. <laughs> so, interesting. Uh, all right, so you ready to do this? Yeah, this is definitely not political. So Good. there's well, that. Hey, we normally don't do politics ever, so that's fine. Yeah, you know. we mentioned you know presidents. If we, if we want to talk about politics, we can, it's our show. Yeah, we can. We absolutely can. Or if someone wants to write in a story about politics. Oh, yeah. I'm sure in this day and age, that'd be a great story. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe Let's we shouldn't advocate Talk about that. abortion. Thoughts? <laughs> 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 well, that's going to be an episode someday. You know it is. Probably season yeah. two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's give it some time. All right. You know what, Amanda? Why don't you go ahead and let's get this going. Let's listen to my story. I remember that day like it was yesterday. It was one I'll never forget for the rest of my life because it changed everything. 17 years old with my entire life ahead of me, and yet I already had one thing figured out. It was a warm and sunny day, which is always a nice surprise when you live in the Midwest. Given the weather, my brothers and I decided to go to the park. And that's where it all happened. That park changed my life. See, now I've been married for 50 years to the love of my life. I have 11 amazing children and even grandchildren. Life has treated me well, but that day at that park really changed things. My brothers and I were ready to start up a new chaotic adventure, and that's when it happened. I fell in love. All it took was a single glance at her lovely face, and I knew. I knew I wanted to marry her. She had this silky dark hair and these incredible gray-blue eyes. You know the ones I'm talking about. The ones that those who have them always think are generic and simple, but really they're the most beautiful and intricate. She had a way with her smile, and as soon as her eyes met mine... I just knew. She was there with her sisters and I there with my brothers, but I finally worked up the nerve to talk to her. Some people question these moments, but we all have felt an instant connection to another at some point, a moment that takes your breath away, a moment where you instantly know, this is what I want. And that moment, meeting Elizabeth, was the first time that I knew this is what I wanted. This was meant for me, and I could love this woman for the rest of my life. And I have, 50 years later, but I remember that day like it was yesterday. Short story, short and sweet. Hey, so that's a story about either love or lesbians. Sure. Okay. How do we get to lesbians? I don't know why, because you were telling it and you said <laughs> she, she, she. So I'm like, is this a gay story? No. Okay. We're, it's, a, it's. I like to hear your instant reactions. That's cool. <laughs> I don't have any problems with it. I feel like I just, I, f- I feel like I'm going to be on the Twitter, the Twitter box, the Twitter timeout box. I'm so sorry. No, I don't think you said anything mm, offensive. Thank God. No, I think you can, you can point out people are gay. It's okay. See? Well, in this, I was actually going to make this a question as well. I was reading this story. I guess story. it could be a guy. Did you think, did you picture this as a male or a female who is the storyteller? Well, I think like, I've answered that. Zach? Yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I also assumed it was a girl. I mean, it was read by a girl. So. Oh, okay. Next time, typically where my mind goes, talk about like this if you would. Just be like, (laughs) you know what I was thinking about us? That broad's over there. (laughs) Sly Stone back in the 
Hey, it's you. all right, you got to really like Jason Statham. Hey, you. I don't have a very she good man voice. one of my favorite, uh, favorite dames. I really dig that one. Eh? Yo. It's good. I, well, also, I fell in love once. It was great. <laughs> I killed him. And then I snapped his neck. <laughs> That was a very sweet story we just wrote. Wow. But when okay. it started, I actually thought we were going into abortion <laughs> because you said <laughs> <laughs> something about 17 years old and, you know. I had my entire life ahead of me. I had my entire life in front of me. I'm like, oh, we're going to have abortion. We just made jokes and that wasn't funny. <laughs> that would have been real. I should have changed my entire <laughs> story would have and been so uncomfortable. read it off the fly. I'm like, no. Is, is one of your questions about the fact that this person has 11 freaking kids? <laughs> no, my first question is, what do you think the moral or theme of this story is? Overpopulation is a real threat. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I want to say is offensive. <laughs> and they all revolve Have around... Have you been drinking tonight? <laughs> no, everything revolves around like 11 kids, really? I mean, that was the briefest of mentions. At this point, it's like that <laughs> the bouncy castle at Chuck E. Cheese, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah. what's the moral or theme? Uh, you, you never know when you're going to meet the love of your life. Okay. Zach, are you sticking with overpopulation as a real problem? He's right. He's right. I mean, I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, yeah, love at first sight, I guess. Boom! Uh, Shakalaka. Okay. okay. Easier than that or how to discover what a boner feels like. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> This this oh. is uh this I'm pretty sure you could say that at a PG podcast, all right? I can you? I it's ana- that's anatomical. There are bones in in and uh meat of all kinds. So <laughs> it's not how it works. It's it's, in, it's part of cows. You could hear that word in school. Mm, I think it would be frowned upon. I'm pretty sure we said a lot. I'm pretty sure my old teacher said that word. I don't think teachers should probably be saying it. <laughs> yeah, why are they class. saying that to you? I well, I mean, her, her leg was on my thigh, now that I think about it. <laughs> or her hand was on my thigh, I apologize. Hey, Zach, you ever, uh, you ran out, boy? <laughs> uh, Zach, you ever been looking at the clock and it was six, then suddenly it was 12? <laughs> <laughs> Here's how we tell time. <laughs> all right, so we're going to move on from all this. Thank how <laughs> How do you manly men here... Define uh, true love. Oh, oh boy. No, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, have at it. Remember, your wives are listening. No, they're not. Mine's not. Oh, she might. No, I promise you, she's not. I promise Ooh, you, she not might. Not a fan of smirk, huh? No, just not a fan of you. You know, me. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's really what it boils down to. What do you think, Zach? What do I think about love? What do you define true love as? Oh, man. I used to have this this definition at the ready, to, like you used I, to swoon women or so, women or something. Was this like your pickup you line? No, 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 no. True love. Uh, <laughs> do you know what true love is? This feels so uncomfortable. Do you know what yeah, love of is? Course I, of course, I know what true love is. I've read a Spider Man comic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I mean it's somebody who right like accepts you for your faults and is, is patient with your. With your weird sensibilities, you know, is the other half that forms your whole. Yeah, I mean, that's that's all. That's r- about as deep as that can get. No, but that's all no, right in line. I mean, that's yeah. You want somebody who's a friend first and mate second. If you're with some, I think it's true love is somebody who you can have a great time with and also, you know, do some with. Is that what it sounds mm-hmm. like for you? That's the noise I make. <laughs> Everyone has a mating call. <laughs> and just, that is Aaron's. I just walk in the room and... <laughs> cluck, cluck, cluck. She, know, she knows what time it is. Yeah, it is. I'm like, I don't know why your pants are still on. I just made the noise. <laughs> <laughs> so uncomfortable. Oh, man. True love is a woman that'll make a sandwich for you. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not touching that. And you shouldn't either. Now I'm in the Twitter timeout. Yeah. It's definitely not that, though. Definitely not. No, no. It helps. I mean, it does. does it hurt. I'm hungry. <laughs> I eat. So that, that's wonderful. I will tell you, through my marriage, my wife has learned to cook and it's gotten better because of it. So there's that. The marriage or the food has gotten better? Food. Okay. Food's gotten much better. <laughs> the marriage has, has plateaued years ago. <laughs> it's still where it was. But, the, but I'm full now. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> 
well, true love. I think Zach was actually onto something where it, it's you both that were onto something where it's obviously got to be more than just a sexual connection because otherwise you're just having, you know, friends with benefits or well, lust is really what it would be. So you have to have that friendship. You have to have a, a solid foundation to base it off of. And it has to be somebody that you that you communicate with, that you're both equally honest with each other about things on and, and things like that. So there's lots of – everybody has their own experience let's, of true love. I don't think there's a real definition for let's it. Let's have a little chit-chat about the honesty thing. How honest oh, do you okay. think you can be? How honest, like, how honest should your true love mate, wife, husband, whatever – how honest should you be able to be with that person? Everybody always says you got to be completely honest with your mate for them to be a, be a real relationship. And I'm like, yeah, there are certain things I don't that think I don't so. think you need to divulge into. So then, honesty isn't the isn't the most. No, important it's pretty. Part. It's pretty. How important. do I look in this dress? If they look hideous, and you say you look hideous, or you do not look as attractive as you could look in something else, and they take very. <gasps> And they go well, in the other room. You would never say that. You would just say, you know, but if I you really like the green dress. Definitely. I've definitely said that. What? Yeah, How are you still married? Well, well, yeah, I mean, you just be like, hey, that's not a, no, that's not a flattering dress. That's. What do you mean? That's, that's not that offensive. That's, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's honesty. You can't be mad at him I for being like honest. I feel like you should still be able to work around that a little bit and just say, oh, well, that I was working looks- around it. I didn't say you look hideous. Oh, man. You didn't say, oh, that good year blimp just rolled into town. You didn't say that. <laughs> you just said, it's not a flattering dress. That's honest. Why Why is all it? Right. Everybody always says. Because we're sensitive, all right? Yeah. I, easy. Nobody was talking about you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just wondering how honest is too honest. Like, when is it? Okay, we want honesty, but we don't want complete honesty and true love. We want somebody who's going to be upfront about situations and their their feelings and things like that, where you can have the conversation. You don't have to express every thought that goes through your head. You just have to be willing to have a conversation about things that matter. My best relationships in life are with people that I can say stuff like that and they don't get mad. And I think that's true of most people. Most people like your best girlfriend or guy friend or whichever, you know, whoever's your best friend or best friends, your best relationships are usually the people that you can say those things to and they don't, they don't take offense to it. Unfortunately, I don't think most people find that. They say they found true love, but they can't say those things they want, they, they want us, the honest truth mm-hmm. to people. And I don't think it's true, lo- true love. It's love. It's love. But it's not like a soulmate kind of thing. Oh, we're gonna get into this. We're not talking about soulmates just yet. Uh, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. I, I honesty thing it always bugs me because people always say you gotta be 100 percent honest, and I say absolutely not. I think that would ruin most relationships. Well, all right. What do you think, Zach? You, you see where I'm coming from? I mean, yeah, be somebody you can be direct with, right? I got time to play around. I don't want sh- to have to spend my life having to sugarcoat everything because you can't handle it. You're with who you're with. You know, if you're with, I look at it as you're with me. You should accept me for who I am and how well, I say it, things. And presumably, you know, we found people that are receptive to that and work with that. Mm-hmm. Whereas maybe if you're not as direct a person, ho- hopefully you would find somebody uh, that kind of kind of maybe balances that out or something. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sidetracked your, your, your plan, but I was just Oh, it's curious. okay. No, I like about true love and that always comes to my mind when I'm talking about true love. We all have. Because I talk about true love all the time. Yeah, you? All those news, yes, man. <laughs> He's always texting me sonnets that he's writing for his wife. <laughs> she never seems to see them. What though. do you think? Zach, should this rhyme? No, no, you're good. I That's I would love. like to have those read on this show. That's never like, gonna happen. We'll just have an episode Because I've of, never written them. <laughs> of Aaron's sonnets. Roses are red, violets are blue. Take off this dress. I'm ready to do you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the extent of my wow. poetry. Wow. All I, right. I rhymed twice in you one did. sentence. And I'm it shouldn't you know. have. Okay. And it, I don't yeah. think that's how it works. That's too bad. You're, you're, <laughs> you're missing out on love. Do you believe in love at first sight? And, and why do you feel the way you do? No. I mean, you can, you can feel like head over heels attraction for somebody at first. Uh, but if you can't, if you have not had a conversation with the human being yet, you are not in love with them. You want to put your penis inside of them or have their penis put in you or things rubbing together. However, it works for you. <laughs> Uh, until until you chat, you are not 
in love. <laughs> I'm glad we covered all of the, the gender bases. Why are we doing a sex ed class? <laughs> <laughs> and this is how you put a condom on. Grab your bananas, ladies and gentlemen. Roll it slowly. <laughs> uh, everything he just said, he's absolutely – I think he's 100% correct. The, I don't believe in love at first sight. It's a, it's a silly notion that I think people have because love means more than just your – I'm in awe of you. That's That's a little stalkerish for me. It is a romanticized turn of phrase you use when you're 50 years married and you say, oh, yeah, I knew right away I was going to marry her, even though everybody in the room knows you're full of it. Here's a secret because my wife doesn't listen to Interesting. Smirk. I've heard that a couple times. I'm like, oh, I'm going to marry her. Oh, that didn't work out. Oh, I'm going to marry her. Oh, that didn't work out. Eventually, it's going to work out. You're just playing the odds. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way of looking at it, yeah. I'll have you know I listened to her before. I talked to her before this episode, and I think she might listen in on this one. <laughs> Uh, so I wanted, <laughs> if it makes her feel better, I did think, hey, I'm going to marry her. So Yeah, when you decided to propose. <laughs> she, said, she said no the first time I proposed. She turned me down. Well, you probably deserved it. Yeah. So she gets what she gets. That's the way I look at it. Enjoy this podcast. <laughs> she knew better the first time than she, than she got wore down. She came. Yeah. Well, the other prospects didn't work out. What about you, Amanda? Do you believe in love at first sight? I bet this is where the difference between men and women come up. Mm, I bet you're wrong. Uh, I, I don't know. Well, now she's now she's rebelling on purpose. <laughs> no, no, no. There's Damn okay. It, I should have let her finish. So there's a biological basis of where you you're when you are with someone that you're attracted to and you you can feel the feelings of love because of oh, the re- <laughs> release of chemicals in your brain. Twelve oh five. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's the same pleasure response that you get from when you're eating chocolate. And so this is all what? scientifically proven. Yes. Seriously. Um, I'm not a big chocolate guy. It makes me want to <laughs> make love and smear myself in chocolate. Ew. Why'd you make it sexual with the chocolate? <laughs> like Skittles? Like when I eat a Skittle? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> that feeling? Yeah. <laughs> same difference. The same process happens is what I'm saying. <laughs> But that doesn't mean like love is deeper than that, where to to sustain any any sort of that feeling and love is more of a I think it becomes a choice after a while. You have to you kind of have to choose that you're going to continue to stay in this situation. You're going to choose to try to work through the problems. You're going to choose this person with their faults continuously. They're not going to you're never going to have that same honeymoon feeling for the rest of your life. You might have, you know, those moments and everything, but eventually life kind of gets in the way and you start to lose some of that. So while I think you can you can feel like you love somebody because of the release of chemicals in your brain, that doesn't mean that you're actually in love with them. I don't believe that there's that true love there. It's, but you can, you might feel that way just because of the release of chemicals. What do stalkers feel like? They're just always love at first sight. Oh, that one. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> that one tickles my fancy. Yeah. yeah. Well, she tickled something. So, you're, wow, you're just bringing it down. So, <laughs> so you're agreeing with us then? Yeah. But, okay. But yeah. I, I think the only difference is that I think you – that people confuse – the feeling, the overwhelming feeling of an of it's more than I think it can be more than infatuation where you feel that connection with somebody. There's there's so much, but you haven't learned enough about them to right. even you know what their you flaws don't, you are. You don't know them. To me, in love at first sight is just a silly concept. You don't know anything about them. What if you had that feeling in your stomach and then you met them and they were just an awful person? Is that still love at first sight? No, it's just you have uh, a lot of dopamine you, going you're around. You're very attractive. Or you're attractive to them in, in some way, or they did something that really caught your eye in whatever it was. Maybe they did something nice for someone or, or whatever it was. Then you got to know them and mm, maybe maybe it worked out, maybe it doesn't, but that's not love at first sight. That's, yeah. that's just it's more physical than than psychological and emotional and whatever else are left. Does anyone else have the elephant love song medley from Moulin Rouge stuck in their head right now? Just you. Nope. It's okay. all you. I just wanted to check. But keep keep humming along in your head. All you need is love. Great. And we got paper royalties. Amanda, what else you got? <laughs> you were talking about soulmates a little bit earlier. You mentioned soulmates. Mm-hmm. Do you believe that you can have more than one true love? Now, Ooh. I'm gonna This is a tricky question to ask married dudes. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm change I'm gonna ask the question. I'm gonna propose the question to you both as such. Mm. If you are if you are a widow, so your spouse has passed away, do you think that you have a new another true love out there for after that relationship has 
Sure. Ended. Sure. You think so? 100%. If any, I'm sorry, I don't subscribe. You're only going to love, there's only one person that can love you. Come on. Well, you love, you're loving. Like, there's only one person I can, I, I'm capable of loving. No, I don't agree at all. Okay. So you think you have multiple true loves out there. It's just a matter of I which don't believe in the whole selected. concept of true love. I mean, it's just at all. No, I don't believe in true, true love, meaning there's only one. Is that what you mean? Like, well, that's Highlander? why I asked you in the beginning. How do you define true love? I didn't say that there can only be one that matches okay. that. Okay, so I then just, for your definition, then it works differently for you. Love is love. I don't, I, true love doesn't mean only one person can love you. Okay. And you can only love one person. I don't agree with that. There are, what, seven billion people? What are we up to now? I don't even remember. I think we're up to like around eight. Are we? Maybe. I, I lost track. Whatever the number is, there's billions of people. Not I'm so many with sh- abortion still being certain, legal, but. <laughs> I'm certain <laughs> That was very uncomfortable. I'm certain <laughs> that there's somebody else out there that can love me for me and I can love for them. Is it likely I'm going to find them in my lifetime? I don't know the answer to that. I really don't. But it's possible. Sure. Well, I don't believe in the concept of a soul. So the concept of a soulmate, by virtue of that fact, also does not exist. Okay. True love. We'll stick with the word true love. There's too many situations. There's polyamory. There's a uh, marriage of many spouses. There's... Yeah, widows that find love again. Yeah, I guess you can have true loves, plural. For you? What do you mean for me? You're Well, you're talking about like all of how everyone else feels. I, I can't imagine that you're, I mean, I don't think you're polyamorous, but I'm not really sure, I guess. Yeah, but in your, I mean? from your perspective, the way you see things, do you think that you could ever have like multiple true loves? Mm, that is a tricky thing to ask a married man. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's why I approached you differently. Question. Like, if your wife had passed away, just do make you sure think- she doesn't listen to the Smirk podcast, and you're gonna be okay. Well, <laughs> when it's as good as it is, how could she not? Amen. This is where the honesty thing can- comes in, right? Be but as share the show with your friends, just not Zach's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Tricky question to answer, but yeah, I, I don't know. Ugh. What a terrible question to ask me. <laughs> You got to answer it. You got to be honest with us, Smirksters. No, well, yeah, I'm sure you could find love again. It's it's difficult to fathom my wife dying and doing anything other than just like sulking in my own self pity for decades to come. But it is possible. Wow. Suck up to your wife. Great Good answer. Job. Why didn't I think of that? That was hang on, I'm writing that down. Suffer decades. <laughs> well, I'm pro- sulking. I'm prone to I'm prone to allowing myself to suffer. So. Can uh, can we go back and I can re-answer that question and just make sure I say it? <laughs> you do the editing by all yeah, means. That's true. I, you know what? When you ask me that question, it might be just Zach's answer that pops up. <laughs> <laughs> just my voice and everything. Yeah. It's a poor edit job. I'll just change the pitch a little bit and it'll be a little higher. Yeah, there you go. I don't think that's how it works. That's how it's going to work. Mm-hmm. We all have a true love for different moments in our life. Like if we met that person at a certain time in our life, then they could be the true love for that time. But I think it's all a matter of when you when you end up meeting your one of the many true loves that I think you have out there that you could have a connection with and make a relationship last. And when you happen to to both meet each other and come along and decide on that, because I think even if you have the right connection with somebody, if you don't have the timing for it then it's not the right relationship for you. But that doesn't mean that you're on, you're bound to one person for your entire life. Damn right. You don't own me. So if I got married, <laughs> like that wouldn't be my my only true love. Like it would be obviously a legitimate true love for me. But is that the end of it? I mean, don't screw up. Otherwise, I might get a second husband. I don't That's know. That's right, man. I always like to dangle that carrot and be like, mm. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, uh, oh, what was that? <laughs> no, it's not, I shouldn't say it, but it's funny. There's always this joke that women will do this thing where they say, if you get in a fight or you get mad, and they say, well, you're not going to get any, or you're not going to get any for a month. That's uh-huh. always the, the the threat. My answer to that with any woman I've ever been with has been, no, you're not going to get any. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the way that I prefer to look at love. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if, she's, if she is threatening that, then that's a pretty childish way to act. But you know what Honestly. happens. We, we've, we've been there, right? We've all been there. Well, the, I know guys have been there. I don't know if women have been there. I don't know if you have the same problem. No no person has ever guys, been like, no, I don't want to have sex You guys tonight. don't withhold it. We exist in a uh, a generation that discusses sex more, I think. That's so good. How about that? 
Yeah. I mean, you a, a woman could literally, a guy could say that and he could stand tall and strong and proud. And then a girl takes off her clothes and is like, are you sure? And then he's like, just kidding. I changed my mind. Mm, I think mm. I will. I will. I am willing to go on the record that Zach and I are both stubborn enough. To you, say, I was going to say you two are probably the only people stubborn enough in this entire world to not do it. Well, yeah. On principle. If mm-hmm. I said just it. on principle. But you would definitely be showing. I, mean, I don't want to. Otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. That's why you, you excuse yourself to the restroom for 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes. You, 10 minutes. And you knock it out. <laughs> This is a very naughty episode of Smirk. This, this one's called Smirk. <laughs> this is not what this episode was supposed to be. Sorry, true love, right? Well, yeah, hey, you know what? Sex and love are intertangled. They are. They go hand in hand. It is. Yeah. What um, about the people who are married and say they're in love, but then they don't have sex? Sucks to be them. <laughs> they're lying. What do you mean? They're well, lying? I mean that's why the, that's why it has the term of a sexless marriage. Like it's not a positive thing. There's a lot of people that are in sexless marriages. And how many of them are thrilled about it? (laughs) I don't know. I mean, it depends, man. You do get tired as you get older. So you're just like, I don't want (laughs) to mess with this. I would much rather just watch MacGyver. and MacGyver? (laughs) Nobody nobody says that. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like, I want to watch MacGyver reruns, maybe some Blue Bloods, and go to bed. That's all I want to do. Blue (laughs) Bloods. Now you really are old. Take your blood pressure medication <laughs> yeah. before you go to sleep. It happens. It happens <laughs> as you get older. Uh, well, what do you guys think? Do you think this story was truth or fiction? Truth. Mm, fiction. So this is actually a listener, Angela Wallach's grandparents' story. Oh. And they were together for 50 years. Her grandma was 15 and her grandpa was 17 when they met at the park. And he knew yeah, that he was going to marry He knew that Rest he was going to marry field, play ball. <laughs> Um, and then he, she and him, the two of them were together until he passed away when he was 70 and she lived till she was 90. So it was a very- Oh, he, she lived 20 years longer. Yep. Usually it's Plus. when they're, they're married that long, like it's a year later or something that they pass away. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Women definitely usually outlive men statistically. <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Keep waiting, but- <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for that life insurance payout. <laughs> uh, just kidding. That's a very sweet story. Yeah, it is. And years. she she had all of like almost every I I mean obviously I had to kind of create the story and I sent it to her to make sure she was okay with it. But um the details about her grandma, she sent me photos of her grandma, how the two of them met, the sisters and the brothers, like all of those details, this, you know, that it was in warmer weather and it was in the Midwest, it was actually true, in then. Illinois. Yeah, super true. She knew a lot of details, so it's obviously a story that's been passed along throughout the family. I mean, there are you know they had a lot of kids, loving kids, and I wonder if Grandma Angela, if you're if you're listening, <laughs> if you while you were listening to this thought about Grandma and Grandpa getting it on. <laughs> well, she is now because <laughs> that's what sure. we want to leave you with. I was wondering if Grandma was hot back in the day. That's <laughs> yeah, question. I'll send you photos. You know, I've seen some people's grandmas, and then you go like you go to their house and they see a picture of them when they're young, like damn, nice, right. Pappy. <laughs> pappy? What nice? <laughs> pappy. That's what I call him. <laughs> Every grandpa's a pappy. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so what's the uh, title of your story? Yesterday. But it was like 50 years ago. <laughs> but he remembered it like it was yesterday. They have Alzheimer's? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> they passed away, so yeah. no. <laughs> oh, well, the question still stands. Did he? <laughs> I, mean, don't know. I don't know what he passed away from. All you guys right. are awful people. <laughs> I don't think it was a legitimate question. Zach, legitimate question, right? I, would, I was just trying to search the medical history of the scenario to try to get all the <laughs> ascertain all the facts. Research. Uh, well, as our show goes, we will occasionally pick listener stories to read and discuss in Smirk. If you'd like a chance to have yours read, email to my story at smirkpodcast.com. You can join the conversation by joining our Facebook group. Follow us on Twitter at Smirk Podcast. And be sure to use the show's hashtag Smirk. One thing that's very important, if you if you do like Smirk, hop on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or whatever and leave us a review because uh, it's the first year of the show. We're really trying to get people to listen to it. And the more you do that and the more you share it on your social media outlets, whether it be Twitter or Facebook or whatever, the more people actually will find the show and check it out and maybe hopefully like it as much as you do, I assume, if you're listening every week. Please we do hope. that. We hope. We hope they like it. If, we, if you don't like it, you're going to get cops coming to your door. <laughs> That's what I hear is happening right now in the background. See that? The law. They're the law coming for you. Come. They're going to come for you. Kansas City is a dangerous town. As you write your own life story, always remember to tell it with a smirk.
Bad boy, bad boy. What you going to do? Remember, as you tell your own life story. Oh, wait. As you tell your own life story. Why do I always put two remembers? I don't know. But hurry up. The, the, the law is story. catching up to us. Will you hurry up? <laughs> as you tell your own life story, always remember to tell it with a smirk. Are you being robbed right now? Here, I'm, I muted it. Oh, you're lucky well, I muted nice. it. You're lucky I muted it because there's a chopper right overhead. Was what? Are you kidding me? Of a, what is going on in your neighborhood, man? Is there a manhunt? I live on the I live on the border of like good town, bad town. <laughs> I think you should so. move. I think you should stay because it sounds fascinating. You should get a cops crew yeah. out there. Start a podcast, want, true crime. <laughs> you just yeah. run up to the crime scene. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll, be easy to, that'll be easy to stand out. Hey, excuse me, officer. <laughs> Speaking of the microphone, what's going on? <laughs> it's for the podcast, <laughs> sir. A woman and her two daughters were murdered. <laughs> what? Brutally. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's dope, dude. Now hit smash. Smash that subscribe button. You know how it is, guys. <laughs> oh, I thought that was really <laughs> what happened. I thought it was real. <laughs>